Okay, this will be the lecture for chapter 24. We've got capacitance and dielectrics. First thing we'll introduce is we'll talk about what capacitors are and how to calculate capacitance. Take a look at first look at circuit design, look at uh, networks of capacitors and how they behave. Uh, capacitors are going to store energy, they're going to store energy in the electric field inside of them, so we'll talk about how that happens. And lastly, we'll introduce material inside of capacitor called a dielectric and talk about how it's going to change the capacitance of a capacitor. So what is a capacitor? Essentially, any two conductors that are separated by an insulator form what we call a capacitor. Now, in general, this will be two metal plates that are initially uh, connected. Some charge can flow between them, and so um, electrons will go from one to the other one. And the magnitude of charge will typically be the same on each of those two conductors. Kind of looking at um, this figure right here, two point charges separated by air, air being an excellent insulator, um, form a very crude rudimentary, rudimentary capacitor. The defi definition of capacitance is going to be the ratio of the magnitude of the charge on each of the two conductors, as well as the voltage, or divided by the voltage between them. Now, you know, think about this guy right here. This guy is going to have, say, voltage at A. This guy is going to have some voltage at point B. And this VAB is simply going to be the voltage at A minus the voltage at B. Now, kind of looking at units here, you know, unit for charge is going to be coulomb. Unit for potential is going to be a volt. This, of course, has a spe special name. It's going to give us a unit with a F. That's going to be a unit of a farad. So we'll talk about capacitors having so many farads associated with them. One of the most common types of capacitors that we'll be dealing with is a parallel plate capacitor. Again, there's going to be two parallel conducting plates separated by some distance that's uh, relatively small compared to their dimensions. So here we have these two plates right here. They each have uh, plus and minus Q on those guys. They're separated by some distance. They have some potential difference between them, and they also have some surface area A and D is kind of the distance of separation. Let's take a look at the basic definition of capacitance. Capacitance is going to be equal to the charge divided by VAB. Now we know from the previous chapters that we can write the voltage as the electric field between them multiplied by the distance of separation. We know what the electric field is. Again, building on previous chapters, the electric field is going to be equal to the charge divided by the permeability of free space and the area multiplied by the distance here. So we can kind of rewrite this guy to say that the capacitance is going to be equal to the um, permeability of free space multiplied by the area multiplied by the distance of separation between the plates. This is for a parallel plate capacitor only. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is we know that the electric field is going to be more or less um, a constant uniform um, creature in between these two guys. It's going to be going away from the positive side and towards the negative side. So if we know what the capacitance is, we could then say go ahead and calculate what the electric field is knowing um, area and distance of separation. Now let's take a quick look at a spherical capacitor, even though in practice it's really hard to actually make one of these. We're going to have some um, outer shell with charge negative Q, some inner, ch inner shell with charge of positive Q, and we can write our capacitance to be the charge divided by the voltage between those, these guys. Now what is the voltage between these guys? You kind of draw your Gaussian surface in there and you find out that the charge on the outer shell is not going to affect the voltage. The voltage inside is only going to depend on the charge of the inner shell. So, and we could write our voltage to be equal to KQ divided by radius. So this allows us to write our voltage at A to be equal to KQ divided by the radius of A. We can write the voltage at B to be equal to KQ divided by the divided by the 
radius at B, and then the voltage difference AB is simply going to be the difference between those, the voltage at A minus the voltage at B, so it's going to be equal to KQ1 divided by radius A minus 1 divided by radius B, where I've simply factored out the K and the Q. Now you take the ratio of VAB and Q, and you can see this, this guy is going to cancel out. And so we're left with our capacitance is going to be equal to 1 divided by K, and then 1 over RA minus 1 over RB. And we can do a little bit of algebra to simplify this if we really wanted to, but I'm not going to belabor the point. The main point I want you to take away from the spherical capacitor is, is we can use our knowledge from chapters 22 and 23 to come up with our potential and apply that to calculate our capacitances. Taking a look at a cylindrical capacitor, it's going to be pretty much the same type of setup. We write our capacitance to be equal to the charge divided by the voltage AB, where here we would have some voltage at A, we'd have some voltage at B, and what we can do is we can use example 23.10 to give us the voltage for a long cylinder, plug that in for our voltage, and thus we have our capacitance. I'll leave the details up to you for this one. Now let's take a look at what happens if we hook two capacitors together. What's going to happen to the capacitance? So we're going to start, with, start talking about circuit design. The first way we can hook capacitors together is going to be in series, which is essentially going to be capacitors that are connected one after another. So if you take a look at this circuit right here, these black lines are going to be just wires. Um, this is going to be my first capacitor. This is going to be my second capacitor. As we draw capacitors just like two parallel plates. And what we can do is we can say we have some potential across them. We have some capacitance from the first capacitor, capacitance from the second capacitor. It turns out, very important concept is both capacitors are going to have the same charge on them, Q. So this capacitor is going to have plus Q and negative Q, and this capacitor is going to have plus Q and negative Q. Thinking about the equation that capacitance is going to be equal to the charge divided by the voltage, or potential, um, since they have the same charge in different capacitances, then that means this voltage, or this potential drop is going to be different than this potential drop, simply because the capacitances are different. The charge is going to be the same. It turns out that we can add the potential differences together to get the potential difference across the entire circuit. What we can also do is we can say these two capacitors are going to behave just like there's one equivalent single capacitor with um, the same charge on each different plate here. And we can write the equivalent capacitance with this equation right here. 1 over the equivalent capacitance is going to be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus any other capacitors that you have um, linked together in series. Very important equation to have written down and know how to use. So in this circuit right here, we would say 1 over the equivalent capacitance is just going to be 1 over C2 plus, or 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Um, do not forget to invert this equation to get the equivalent capacitance. You can't just say the equivalent capacitance is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. You have to um, take the inverse of that to get the equivalent capacitance. The other way we can hook up capacitors would be called in parallel, and what that really means is that the voltage difference, the potential difference, VAB, is going to be the same for both capacitors. Taking a look at this circuit design right here, here we have some potential VAB, and it's supplying the same amount of potential to this capacitor and this capacitor. So both of these capacitors have, have the same potential across them. You know, maybe up here they're going to have VA, and down here they're going to have VB. This potential difference is going to be the same for both these capacitors. What that really means is that the charge is going to be different on each one of these capacitors. And we can write that charge as you know, Q1 for this capacitor, and then this capacitor is going to have a different charge on that. 
we can reduce this to an equivalent capacitance, as much like we did for capacitors in series. It's a lot easier for this guy right here. Simply, the equivalent capacitance is just going to be the algebraic sum of all the capacitors in the loop. Again, very important, uh, very important equation. And so we can essentially combine these guys to write uh, to a single circuit with an equivalent capacitance. And in this case, it's going to now have a charge where, where it's simply going to be the sum of the two charges on each of those individual capacitors with some equivalent capacitance. We can use these rules for series and parallel capacitors to take big ugly um, diagrams, like or big ugly circuits like this guy right here, and break them down into manageable chunks. So taking a look at this one, the first thing I want to break down are, is these two capacitors that are in series. And I'm going to write 1 over the equivalent capacitance of these guys to be equal to 1 divided by 12 microfarads plus 1 divided by 6 microfarads. Make sure I invert that and I come out with essentially that the equivalent capacitance is going to be equal to 4 microfarads. Now I have three capacitors that are in parallel and I can simply write the equivalent capacitance is, is going to be equal to 3 microfarads plus 11 microfarads plus 4 microfarads. That's going to be 18 microfarads. So I've broken those three capacitors into this capacitor right here. And then I apply the same sort of um, parallel, or same sort of series rule for this guy. It's going to be you know 1 over 18 plus 1 over 9. And I can write the equivalent capacitance to be simply 6 microfarads. Now, the game doesn't just end right there. Um, what we're given is, is we're given that the voltage AB is going to be equal to 9 volts, and we can go ahead and use that the capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the voltage to say that the charge is going to be equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. Here we have the capacitance to be 6 microfarads. I'm just going to leave everything in micro farads and voltage is going to be 9 volts so the charge across this guy is going to be 54 micro coulombs again I've just kind of kept the, kept the uh, micro just to avoid writing times 10 to the minus 6 so the charge across that, those plates is going to be 54 micro coulombs what that means is since these guys are since we broke this guy down from two series capacitors is that the charge on this guy is going to be 54 microcoulombs, and the charge across this guy is going to be equal to 54 microcoulombs. What we can now do is we can say, well, what's the voltage? What, what's the potential across these guys? Well, I know that I could write the potential is going to be equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. So we're going to have 54 microcoulombs. Capacitance of this guy is going to be 9 microfarads. So the micros are going to cancel out. And my voltage across this guy right there is simply going to be equal to 6 volts. So here I have a potential difference of 6 volts. This one has a charge of 18, or has a um, charge of 54 microfarads. It has capacitance of eight of 18 microfarads and so I'm left with 3 volts across this guy right here. That came from three parallel capacitors. What that means is there is going to be 3 volts across this guy, 3 volts across this guy, and 3 volts across this guy. I can now figure out what the charge is going to be. I can say that the charge is going to be equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. Let's start by this guy right here. The charge across that guy is going to be um, 4 microfarads multiplied by 3 volts. And I'm left with 12 microcoulombs across this guy. I can do the same for this guy and, and figure out there's going to be 33 microcoulombs. And this one is going to be 9 microcoulombs. Micro I can work my way back to this one and figure out what the charges are on all of the plates of this. So we can break it down into a simple capacitor, 
solve for the charge and then we can figure out what the potential drop is across all of these guys working the backwards direction and figure out what the charge is on each one of these plates.